going to give us. Okay. okay. All right. Um, sorry, I had this adjusted and somehow the camera jumped. I don't know why. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, well, thank you, first of all, uh, Andrea, Stefan, uh, Angelos, and Agnesi for this uh, really fun, fantastic conference. And I'm going to I'm going to talk about um, some uh, work I did with um, a, a recent paper on W1 plus infinity, and also work with uh, Monica Page, Mina Hinwich, and Alfredo Guevara. So the starting point is this OPE between or this point I'll start at is the OPE between um, two positive Felicity gluons. Which goes like minus I times the structure constants uh, over Z12. This is just uh, the leading term times uh, the Euler beta function of delta one minus one, delta two minus one times uh, a third positive felicity uh, gluon at um, O plus C at Z2, Z2 bar plus dot, dot, dot. And uh, these gluons have Conformal weights H and H bar, which are equal to delta one plus one over two, delta one minus one over two. So I guess I um, don't really need to explain this formula. It's been written um, a, a couple of a, a couple of times um, during the conference. It was uh, this formula was first uh, computed by uh, uh, Photopolis Taylor and Steeberger using um, uh, just direct Mellon transform of the collinear singularities of two gluons. Uh, it was reproduced using symmetry by Anna, Kamana, Anna Monica uh, Ellis and myself. And then a more recent, even more streamlined uh, derivation was given by, uh, uh, by Mina and Monica. Now, a salient feature of this is that the OPE actually becomes singular uh, as delta one goes to any integer less than or equal to one, singular for uh, delta one is equal to an integer, which will be one, zero, minus one, dot, dot, dot. And we're very interested in, in that uh, integer value. And so we can define um, a new operator, which will have a finite OPE, um, which we'll call R. So we'll call it R1A of Z. And you'll see in a moment why I'm not putting in the Z bar uh, is equal to the limit as uh, uh, delta one, goes to one, uh, delta one minus one times uh, O plus A uh, delta one of Z, Z bar. Now, um, you might think uh, at first, if you didn't, hadn't looked at the OPE, you would have thought that this operator is zero because we're multiplying it by zero, but that thing we're multiplying by is just designed to cancel the pole. And you can see that the corrections to this uh, in this limit, it's only the leading term uh, that survives. And so we're left with a non-trivial OPE for this R, which looks like R1A of Z. There's no, the Z bar dependence drops out, um, is equal to the limit, uh, well, 
but we already defined it. It's with O plus B uh, uh, of delta of, uh, let's call this Z1, Z2, Z2 bar is just equal to uh, minus F A B C um, uh, O plus C Z2 Z bar two uh, over Z12 times I. And um, this is an OPE. And there's no more plus dot, dot, dot. And this is an exact formula known to be an exact formula in, cor in correlation functions. And um, that exactness is equivalent to the uh, leading soft glue gluon theorem. It's exact, uh, sorry, it, it tree, it's tree level exact. Um, now, <laughs> there are other poles here. What do we do about the other poles? Well, um, we could also consider um, delta equals zero. And when delta equals zero, we see I, released, I erased it here, but uh, H bar is equal to minus a half. So uh, things that have negative H bar uh, um, weights, negative integer, half integer H bar weights, uh, not studied so much in conformal field theory because people are always interested in positive weights, but they're finite dimensional representations with negative weights. And here it's just the polynomial uh, polynomials in, 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 in Z bar. And um, so uh, we can define uh, the limit. We get a finite dimensional representation. The operator has a piece which transforms a finite dimensional representation of, of Z bar. And so we can uh, take the limit if delta goes to zero of delta O plus A of z z bar, and let's uh, define that to be um, square root of z. There's just two terms, um, r a minus a half of z uh, plus one over square root of z, r a a half of z. So we've taken this operator, which by construction will have a finite OPE, it will cancel the, the pole in this beta function. Uh, but it's Z bar dependence, it, it, it's not Z bar independent like the leading one, but the Z bar dependence um, is, is very simple. And what we get now is a doublet of soft holomorphic soft currents. And um, it was known that the subleading soft uh, gluon symmetry, uh, there was, that there was, or even the subleading soft photon symmetry, there was a doublet of currents. And now we understand that if we go into the conformal basis, they're nicely um, uh, organized as, a, as the doublet negative dimension doublet representation that appears in the, uh, the SL2R bar. Um, okay, so more generally, we can uh, define a whole infinite towers. We're interested not just in the first two, which had been studied before, but um, we're interested in the whole infinite tower of these guys, corresponding to all the poles. And so we define the limit as epsilon goes to zero of uh, epsilon times O plus A of K plus epsilon of Z, Z bar. And we define it as a sum from n equals, it's a finite sum 
uh, of powers of z bar uh, to one minus k over two of r k a. Uh, let me put the n up here, I guess, of z z bar to the n. Sorry, I want the k up here. And k z bar to the n plus k minus one over two. And these are all uh, these are all negative numbers because k is equal to one zero minus one. Okay, so these things are an infinite power of soft currents. Okay, so um, the fact that there's an infinite tower of, we, we get an infinite tower of soft currents and the first two we knew already were related to soft theorems or they're conformally soft images in the uh, conformal basis. Um, and we're not surprised to see an infinite tower of soft currents because people had already been talking about an infinite tower of soft theorems. Um, these were discussed by, you know, Hamada, uh, Shu, Guevara, uh, um, Lin, Zhang, various other people. But they weren't organized uh, at Banerjee. Yeah. Um, they, they weren't organized in any uh, particular coherent way. And it wasn't known what their algebra was. Uh, even the subleading soft theorem, subleading soft photon theorem, which was known 55 years ago, uh, you get a, uh, a symmetry and um, then you take the commutator of it, you get something else. And uh, so this was, this was a problem which was been around for more than half a century, but it wasn't understood what the closure of the algebra of all these soft theorems is. Um, so, but now we have this nice OPE formula, which I've already erased, but I think you all remember it. And um, now <coughs> I wanted to find the following. Given two currents, let me define a b of z is equal to one over two pi i, the contour integral dw around z of uh, a of w b of z. Now, this is a commutator, but it's not a four dimensional commutator. So I'm not like taking space like slices and taking an order of limits of uh, you know which operator acts first and reversing the order. This is Tom, actually two dimension. What? I think Tom has a question. He just raised his hand. Oh yes, Tom. Tom, please go in. Yeah, uh, I have a question because uh, if I understand right. Uh, uh, let's say in QD, you have a leading and a subleading soft theorem. And now yeah. the whole point about then a sub subleading that uh, this is not, not something which is universal. Okay, so uh, the, uh, there is no formula which would, uh, in which uh, the sub subleading, for example, and Young Mills could be written in terms of the original amplitude. Yes, I mean, so there's no factorization. It's not universal, in other words. So, uh, so I don't know what you mean by uh, sub subleading, and let's say, for example, in Young Mills, what do you mean by that? Okay, are, are you worried about? Uh, can we talk about n equals four? Uh, we have. Um, would you Would you be happy to ask the question in QED? Yes, let's ask in the QED. Okay, so nobody knew how to think about that, and various random statements were made. But um, now we've organized it. But you say that it is, you can make it's, a... un it's universal. These poles are universal. These poles in the OPE are universal. Yeah, in OPE, but what about from the point of the scattering amplitudes? 
Um, well, I think this is one of the structures. So it's very interesting. I, I think this is a prime example of a structure that becomes transparent and easy to describe in the celestial reformulation in his very obscure and momentum space. And indeed, this question of what happens if you take double soft limits or however they wanted to describe it um, in momentum space and what the, you know, there were various, what happens with these sub sub leading theorems is that they, they, they affect only higher angular momentum modes uh, uh, partial waves and it's a it what was just a complicated messy thing um and uh it just there was no language to characterize it and now we're seeing this is a a really nice example of the advantages of the celestial formulation that this whole the problem which was sitting there it could have been asked in 1958 um what happens to the all well, the subleading structure, what's the closure of this um, becomes, it, it turns into a, a simple algebraic question uh, when you uh, use the, you know, the, the celestial formulation. I think it's complete, you know, it's, I just defined it for you. We take these operators, we take the limit as delta goes these negative integers, and then we define this object. This object, by the way, um, from the S matrix point of view, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're taking an S matrix and you like this, and now you add in a soft particle, and then you consider a, a, you know, an integral over S matrices where you move this soft insertion around in a circle. Um, wouldn't be a natural thing otherwise to have thought about. Um, and of course, it is a commutator. It is a bona fide commutator in a different Hilbert space, in the two-dimensional Hilbert space of the conformal field theory on the celestial sphere. I think okay. Has a, Atul has a question. Sarah? Yeah. So about this, uh, if I understood Alfredo's uh, solo paper from like, a year or two ago correctly, then aren't these soft theorems still universal at the level of the MHV amplitude? So in some sense, they are universal if you just consider the self-dual sector of celestial CFD. So maybe it's just saying that this describing the symmetries of self-dual CFD, that's why for the MHV amplitude- No, these are no, no. And beyond- no, so for, for MHV, it's, it's, it's uh, there, there is zero. Mm -hmm. it, it's important that it, that it that it that it's more than that. Certainly, the subleading um, uh, soft photon theorem uh, uh, it can be um, you know okay. It was derived and proven as I said more than half a century ago, um, and it doesn't. It's true whether or not you are in whether you're in the whole theory. Uh, or just in the self-dual sector of the theory. And I, I think this is very important. Uh, and um, now it is true that the subleading soft theorem, there's a finite number of operators that uh, correct it. Um, and those operators, however, um, I would have had to worry about that if I had written down a, um, a, uh, if I'd written down a minus part, uh, part uh, a negative felicity uh, uh, soft particle. Um, so, but this, I mean, this OPE here uh, is, okay, the OPE is erased, but, but that OPE, uh, that, that OPE is, is not corrected. So this acts on, um, this, this symmetry that we're discussing acts on a generic amplitude, and we understand how it acts on a generic amplitude with only hard particles in it. If we have another negative felicity soft particle, then we don't understand how to think about it. But it acts on you know, many generic hard S matrix elements in the real world. So, um, well, here I'm talking about Yang Mills theory, and there aren't, but the analog of this in gravity. Is, is relevant to the, to the real world. 
So I, I think it's important that the symmetry uh, somehow is acting um, not just on special integrable self-dual theories, but it's acting on you know the most uh, the most inter interesting non-integrable system that we know about, namely the real world. Oh, makes sense. Okay, so um, now we had the OPEs. It had a pole in it. So it's a straightforward, if somewhat tedious exercise to use those OPEs to uh, compute this. And we can compute an algebra of these Rs. And the algebra of the R is RKAN, RKRLBM. Uh, is equal to minus I F A B C um, and then follows a complicated uh, thing one minus K over two plus one minus L over two minus M minus N uh, one minus K over two plus N times the same thing with M N goes to mi minus themselves uh, times R K plus L plus one comma C and uh, plus M. So this is now the organization of all the, all the soft theorems L bit, not all the soft theorems, all the ones associated with making positivity things um, um, Soft, conformally soft, and um, I won't. I won't. It's an outstanding problem how to think about, you know, when you also have the other side. But this still is makes statements that are relevant to a subsector of scattering amplitudes. Okay, so now let's go on to gravity, and um, uh, Antelos, can you remind me what? What time am I going to? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I was about to tell you in approximately four minutes uh, that you will be five minutes out from, but uh, you had already a couple of questions. So let's say you have another eight minutes or so. Okay, so in gravity, um, I get an OPE, which I'll just write G, since I only have a few minutes, G plus, G plus goes like Z bar one, two over Z one, two. Um, and again, we get this beta function, delta one minus one, delta two minus one, um, G plus delta one plus delta two. And now we do the same thing where we get rid of these, <laughs> we define soft operators for gravity, which are, denoted now by the same kind of limiting procedure near the poles. And they are denoted H, K, N of Z. <laughs> and you can compute their algebra. It's an even longer expression. But then um, uh, you can define W, N, P is equal to gamma of P minus N gamma of P plus N, H, and this is a little weird, minus two P plus four. Uh, and the H's depend on Z, and this has a subscript N on it. This turns out to be essentially a light ray transform. But it turns out with the on the uh, left side where we just have these finite integer modes, but the light ray transforms are much simpler here. Um, we don't have to worry about the poles. It's just an algebraic redefinition, rescaling of the modes. And there's no poles in this, in the range that I'm in, because given that K goes from one, actually for gravity, K goes from two down, um, we have that um, P is equal to one 
three halves, P is now always positive. Uh, it was related, this was K. And uh, moreover, this, these ends, the finite range of the N here translates into one minus P is less than or equal to M is less than or equal to P minus one. And there's a very complicated expression for the commutators of the H's, which just becomes um, the, 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 the famous um, commutation relations of uh, little w1 plus infinity, which are uh, w m p um, w q n is equal. Now remember, the, everything depends on z. Uh, m p minus one minus n q minus one w m plus n p plus q minus two. Okay, so this algebra, if I don't restrict, if p takes these values, and I don't restrict uh, m or n is called w1 plus infinity. However, I have restricted m and n. And the restriction of with restricted m and n is a closed algebra. And um, that's called the wedge algebra of w1 plus infinity. And now, but now since everybody depends on z, it's uh, the loop group or the Katz-Moody algebra of the wedge algebra of W1 plus infinity. Now, um, this algebra has recurred repeatedly in the literature. It's, uh, you know, for example, it first appeared, well, not even first, uh, it's the, so people often just call it W1 plus infinity because it's a mouthful to say the loop group of the wedge, of the wedge algebra of, of W1 plus infinity. Um, for example, in the study of Klebanoff and Polykov of the discrete states of the C equals one string, that was the loop group of the wedge algebra. And when people talk about W1 plus infinity gravity, it's really the, the symmetry is the loop group of the wedge algebra of W1 plus infinity. Now, in a quantum theory, whenever you have operators, you automatically get uh, operators like these Ws, you automatically get the enveloping algebra, which contains all the products. And the products of, um, of these Ws, of the generators of the loop group of the wedge algebra of W1 plus infinity contain the full W1 plus infinity. So the theory does have a W1 plus infinity sy symmetry, the quantum theory. And um, so we just call it W1 plus infinity uh, to uh, avoid that mouthful. And let me just say that um, th exactly this algebra, this loop algebra, um, uh, there's some very nice lecture notes on this, both by Chris Pope and by Shen from the early 90s where a lot of the properties uh, were, were worked out. Um, now, if we set um, P equals two, we can see we, and Q equals two, we, see, we can see you get back to where you started from here. And uh, so that is, uh, gives us an SL2R, uh, a closed SL2R current algebra, which underlies all this. Oh, 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 underlies all of this. Now, four good things have happened all at once here. Um, the first is a very complicated looking infinite dimensional algebra that's described the power of gravitational soft theorems through some weird looking definition, redefinition of the modes turned in to the W algebra which is probably the most studied of all the infinite dimensional, uh, two-dimensional uh, algebras. The second thing uh, that's really surprising is there's been a lot of 
uh, discussion about the negative weights that appeared, uh, the negative weights in the, in the usual uh, analysis of this in terms of the uh, a certain Virasaro that were appearing in the discussion. And now we see everything has positive weights. Um, all the W weights, the W dimensions, the WSL2R weights, the SL2W weights, they're all positive. So we're no longer in the position of uh, studying a theory with sort of negative norms or negative, or we seem to potentially be no longer be in the position of, of having to study things with, with, with negative norms and so on. Um, and another, another maybe two or three minutes, it'll be done. Okay. The third thing is that this light transform module is question of which side you're transforming seems to get you out of um, uh, some of the singularities and the amplitudes. And also it's related to twisters and twisters are fun. So that's a good thing. Okay. Now we can also redefine the gauge theory gener generators. And we find that all the gauge theory soft theorems nicely recompile themselves into a positive weight irreducible representation of this uh, W1 plus infinity algebra. And finally, let me end with, with one um, speculation. Um, so there's a lot of study of this little W1 plus infinity. And um, when you go to an actual realization for it, there's some 2D models that have this symmetry of free scalar or free both various other things C equals one string. Um, you tend to get a quantum deformation. There are anomalies in the classical theory that uh, deform it to capital W1 plus infinity. In fact, there's a two parameter family of deformations. And the structure constant of capital one plus infinity, uh, you could, they're known uh, iteratively, but they're known to exist, they're known iter iteratively, but they're very complicated. And um, so one of the questions in this field was, how does this simple structure we're seeing in the soft theorem of the poles, how is that affected by loop corrections? And now there's a natural candidate uh, of how this structure could be deformed, it could be deformed from little w one plus infinity to capital W uh, one plus infinity. Um, and so there's, there's somewhere for this all to go. There's some way that this big structure of symmetries, I mean, we don't know that when we quantize the theory that the whole thing doesn't, doesn't seem like it could be possible, but it's possible that this whole beautiful structure we've been finding just gets destroyed at the quantum level. Um, but uh, now, now we have a nice candidate for what could actually uh, be happening. So I guess I'm out of time. Let, let me stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you for the great talk. Okay. Uh, Suheng, let's go. Hi, Andy. Uh, just a quick question. So the little w1 plus infinity algebra has the width group, the width algebra as a subalgebra. So the capital W has the Virasoro with a non trivial C. It's, okay, it's, so, uh, it's a little more subtle than that. Ah. Um, little w1 plus infinity, there's actually, a, it has um, a, a it can, you can add a central term to it, but the central term only appears in the algebra of the generators with um, P and Q equals two. In other words, it only, right, it, 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 it doesn't appear in, it only, it only appears in the spin two generators. Then when you do the quantum, so you can have a central term in little w1 plus infinity, but it's a little thin. Uh -huh. You can do a quantum deformation and you can add a central term. And then the central term appears essentially in every uh, commutator or most of them. Um, 
at wherever it's allowed by the symmetries. And um, yeah, so, there, so there's a two parameter family of, of deformations. One of them is H bar and the other one is the, is the central extension. I see, I see, thanks. Okay, and one question from Anastasia. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Hi, I was just wondering if you guys made more progress on including the negative helicity gluons and this issues with Jacobi identity. Has that been resolved now or it's still not clear? Well, I'd like to say, Nastu, that, you know, somebody said earlier, I didn't comment on it, that the, that the double soft limit is ambiguous. And okay. um, um, that's actually not really true, as you pointed out to me. It, well, the double right. energetically soft limit is ambiguous, but the double conformally soft limit is not ambiguous because you're in, you have to integrate, as you explained to me, you have to integrate over all ways of, of taking the energies to zero when you're translating that into a, a conformally soft thing. So um, I'm, not, I'm not really, you know, uh, no, I ha we haven't resolved uh, that uh, that issue, um, but you know, in in um, in these lectures on W algebras, they have it's a really important one. It's extremely important issue. Well, I haven't resolved it. Now, in these lectures on W algebras, they have. Um, examples of theories with a W left and a W right. And I don't know, maybe that's a clue. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. And I'm not sure, we had some discussion about how you define the commutator between a function of Z and a function of Z bar. It's, it's not this formula, right? So I'm not sure. Um, right, yeah. that's why, I'm, yeah, yeah. We had some discussion about maybe two months ago. That's why I wondered well, if, I'm not there's sure there's, a, I was then. hoping you were gonna, I wasn't working on it because I was gonna hope you were gonna solve it, Nastya. Oh, we stopped working with you, we're gonna work on that. <laughs> but okay, maybe we'll come <laughs> back to it. Yeah, I think we're gonna come back to that. Okay, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions, anybody else? <clears throat> or more for the discussion, maybe. Okay pretty close to the discussion session. So thank you, Andy, very much. We'll take a couple of minutes break and we'll start with the discussion. We'll go over uh, the panelists that uh, the discussion leaders that will basically present for 10 minutes there, uh, some uh, topic of interest. And then of course, I hope everybody from our speakers earlier will be around to uh, discuss more questions, okay? And Khalil, do you want to stop the recording?